Let's do an ordinary to extraordinary edit. But specifically, I wanna show you how you can take an image like this one and using Lightroom's latest features, you can basically add flash in post, turning it into this dramatic shot. My name is Pi, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and slrlounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. Hello, my friends. My name is Pi. Welcome to Adorama TV. I said that like 20 times. Look, you know me, you know how I like to do. I don't like to beat around the bush. Let's get straight into this. I'm gonna start this video with giving you a few tips on just kind of how to shoot when you're going for this kind of a look in post. While I'm doing that, this would be a fantastic time to go ahead, go to the description of the video, download the raw file so you can use it as an exercise file and follow along or load up an image of your choice. You pick. First, when doing this kind of a technique, so we're basically taking this shot right here and we're gonna edit it into something that looks basically like this one. The first thing that I wanna suggest is that you shoot raw. Now, if you'd like to see how this image was created, we'll actually link up the tutorial so you can follow along and watch the entire series as we, we basically shoot uh, inside of a garage, a very simple scene just to show you how much you can do with a little bit of light control. That being said, this image was shot with a Canon R5. We're using the 28 to 70. Let's take a look at the uh, info. At 1 200 of a second, F2 ISO 400. And we're basically zooming in and kind of framing her nicely against this wall. Again, in that other video, we talk composition and everything. I wanna focus here on the editing aspect. And for that, we really wanna shoot raw. That way we have more information. We can do a better job of pushing and pulling tonal details, which is what we're gonna do here. Okay, enough dilly-dally. Let's go ahead and actually start that process. I'm gonna break this down into really two main steps. So with the raw file loaded into Lightroom Classic, I want you to go ahead, well, I'm gonna press the reset button just so you know there's no funny business going on, okay? So there's a fully reset out. We're gonna start with the background. See, I know we're gonna add light to the photograph on the subject, right? So. This is kind of a different workflow and it's based around Lightroom's new AI subject detection features. So what we're gonna do is actually get the overall color, the background, the image to where we want. So focus first on background and color and let's do that right now. I'm gonna start, you know what I was gonna say? I, I like to go warm, but because I always go warm, let's actually go cool this side. It's gonna look a little bit different. This would be the, the warm edit, right? Let's do a, a cool edit. Uh, I'm adjusting temperature down a bit to get to this little bit of a blue. And uh, let's do this. Looking at the background, I'm gonna bring the highlights down a bit and the whites down a little bit. I'm gonna bring the shadows up and maybe a blacks down a little. Again, I'm not looking at the subject at all right now. I know this is a crazy thing because usually we edit for skin tone. We're gonna flip things on its head because of what we're trying to do. This will all make more sense in a minute. Let's go down to the tone curve. And again, thinking about the overall background and the look of the image, what I want to have is a matte finish. So I want anything above this white point to go to a bright gray, which is what's gonna happen as I pull this down. Anything below this black point is gonna go to a dark gray. Now, if you wanna move these by smaller increments, just mouse over those little buttons and press up or down and you'll, you'll get exactly that. Now in the mid-tones, I'm gonna pull up maybe to about, actually let's go to mid-tone highlights and pull up. And let's go to the mid-tone shadows and maybe bring it down a little. This is starting to look really nice. I like the overall toning. I'm happy that we went with a, a colder look on this image, you know? That was a good choice on your guys' part. It was my part, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Let's go down to hue. Uh, this go around for HSL, you know what I wanna do is shift a little bit of the hues. Let's go to the blues and actually shift it a bit towards the teal side, okay? Let's go to the skin tones and actually shift it probably more towards the teals as well. We're gonna go up a little bit. This is gonna have sort of a cold editorial vibe to it. What I'm gonna do is also go into saturation and pull some of the blue saturation out so we don't get oversaturated uh, in, the, in the tonal values. Again, this is all subjective, if you couldn't tell by now, all right? So what I'm doing is getting this to kind of a fun look. You guys decide for yourselves and we can come back to these settings in just a minute, which we might do. So get the overall look kind of dialed in. 
Step two, we have the basic color dialed in. What we're gonna do now is go and actually select our subject. So go to masking, and what you'll do is press this select subject feature. And now what Lightroom's gonna do is, Adobe's gonna use their new Lightroom Classic Magic, they detect the subject, and boom, we have this fantastic selection that already looks great. I'm gonna turn off the overlay so that way we don't see the masking overlay. And what we can do now is affect the subject herself, right? So the subject is being selected. And what I can do is start adjusting her brightness. Now we might wanna do this with exposure, okay? You might think, oh, you know, I wanna add light to her in post. And this is cool, you can add light directly to her. The problem is, is that these exposure adjustments when they're significant like this, it sort of looks flat. It almost looks like it's Photoshopped, right? It doesn't quite look natural. So what I'm gonna suggest instead is make a slight exposure bump, but let's save that for the end of this. Instead, what we're gonna do is actually start, and I'm not sure why the overlay pops back on sometimes. Let's start with highlights, and we're gonna pull the highlights up to maybe 80. Let's go to whites and actually pull the white point up to about 40. Now, if I want to adjust exposure a little bit, I'm gonna bring exposure up to kind of affect everything, right? Overall, um, you know, shadows and all that stuff. And if you wanna see the difference of this, watch this. I'm gonna create a virtual copy. So this would be, let's get her to the same brightness using just exposure versus we'll do the refined way over here, okay? So the refined way, we're gonna go a little more on the highlight side, a little bit more on the white side, maybe do about right there. And I'm gonna go a bit on the shadow side. Let's not even touch exposure. Or if we do, we'll, we're gonna make it very subtle, okay? And I'm even gonna bring the black point maybe down like two notches. Now on this side, I'm gonna get her the same brightness, but we're gonna only use exposure, okay? So right about here. Look at the contrast between these. I want you to see. So on the one hand, you can see all the shadows getting lifted, where on the left side, we have a more refined look because we're only controlling highlights. And I love it. I love the way that this is coming off. So we're gonna go ahead and, and keep going with that style. From here, if you wanna make temperature adjustments to just her, you can also do that too. So let's say we want her just to be a smidge warmer, right? And maybe we wanna bring her skin tones just a little bit toward the green side to sort of match the overall vibe of the image. We can totally do that. I'm gonna be okay with this now at this place. If you're enjoying this tutorial, I would encourage you to check out Mastering Adobe Lightroom. It's a completely new A to Z workshop that we've produced with the F-Stoppers. It includes over 10 hours of video, almost 50 lessons and 150 exercise files, and a complete step-by-step -step Lightroom mastery that's gonna take you through Lightroom Classic, Lightroom Cloud, as well as Lightroom Mobile. You can check it out at fstoppers.com or by following this link. Okay, let's get back to it. This is where we go into step three. We're gonna do local adjustments and we're gonna do refinements now. So what I'm gonna do for a local adjustment is, well, if you do have visual flow, you can just select the radial burn. It's gonna drop a mask. So if I press Shift M, all it did was put a radial mask into the middle of the image. Now, if you don't have that ability to do that shortcut, you can create a preset yourself or just simply go to the Create New Mask option. You're gonna select the radial gradient and you're going to drop it in right where you want over the image. And go ahead and adjust the exposure down, make sure the overlay is turned off. And then we need to invert it because right now it's affecting the inside of the image as opposed to the outside. So we're going to go to the mask right here and right underneath the actual radial gradient, you can press apostrophe or you can just click right here and press invert, right? So it's a little bit more cumbersome. That's why I'd suggest setting up your own preset yourself or if you're using Visual Flow, just go there because it'll save steps. But what we'll do now is actually just start pulling down this overall background. And now we're affecting everything around the face. What we wanna be careful of here is that we don't go too far in affecting like the hands and the feet. Oftentimes I see a radial burn being used and it's kind of basically pulling everything in and we get these dark and cold skin tones down there, right? So what I'm gonna do is actually bring it back a bit to the point where it looks more natural, maybe right about here. All right, and now we can go back and make our refinements to anything else that we want color-wise, okay? So I'm actually gonna pull up on the highlights a little bit more. In fact, what I might do is actually darken the exposure and then bring up on the highlights, okay? Bring up on the white point. Oh, I love the way the background's coming out. And if I need more brightness on my subject, I can come back here I can add a little bit more, 
And I can also add a second layer of this if I wanted to, right? But I don't think I want to add a second layer of it. Well, let's do it just for fun. Let's add a second layer of this effect. So let's go ahead and create a new mask. It's crazy how much we can do inside of Lightroom right now. It's wild. Okay, and what I'm gonna do on this one is let's go ahead and turn off that overlay and bring the white point up. So again, we selected just the subject and let's go ahead and bring the highlight point up. This time I'm getting contrast in by selecting just the whites, right? So I'm bringing the whites kind of all the way up to here. I'm also gonna add a little bit more warmth to the image just overall, okay, or not image, uh, a little more warmth to her. Okay, this looks really cool. One thing to kind of keep in mind, this lets me pull the exposure down just a little bit more, right? I'm gonna add a tiny bit of contrast here and just make fine tuning adjustments as you basically see fit from this point. I really dig this overall look and you can control how much you want the background to go. Like if you want to, let's say, burn down the background more, right? You can go and add another mask. We can go this time to a brush mask and let's go ahead and drop the exposure by 0.5 and now just paint in. And if you want to see as you paint, uh, just turn off the overlay. Okay, and we're going to paint in and I'm going to kind of give it a little bit of a circular shape by just kind of holding down alter option, sort of painting out of the center of this and just kind of refining a bit going up and around and in. This looks so much fun. This looks so much fun. This looks like so much fun. I don't know. Any, any of those words you pick. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more temperature and really we can go to the nth degree here and keep doing more. One small little fine tuning adjustment that I would suggest is this. One of the reasons you want to be shooting raw is because you really want all the image information there because when you're pushing and pulling shadows, you can get a lot of strange color and, and noise and whatnot. Sometimes on these darker areas, like for example, the legs, when we're doing this technique, we're going to get to um, a place where there's kind of roughness and we're, we're almost revealing not only noise, but also uh, the, the color shifts in the leg get exaggerated, right? So I have this little preset in Visual Flow Retouching Toolkit. And if you don't have the toolkit, that's fine. What I want you to do is actually pause the video, dial in these settings, and then I want you to use a brush. So go ahead and select a brush with these settings set up. So smooth skin, 10C, the texture is being reduced, clarity, everything. And all we're gonna do is basically just paint over the legs right there. And you'll notice immediately that all of that goes away. So we, we basically fixed all of that in one little swoop right there along the legs. And you can refine this if you want. It's, it's honestly a very subtle uh, group of settings. So you don't have to get it perfect. It's going to look great either way. The other thing you could potentially do is if you do notice discoloration on like the hands, the legs, where it's like, because, you know, we have more, uh, you'll have makeup on the face, but not necessarily on the hands, right? So the hands and the legs, they can tend to get a little bit on the uh, cooler side. So a simple fix is just to add another brush. And I have a warming preset that, uh, well, it, it's just to, to warm up. Um, again, you can pause, dial in these settings, but all we're going to do is just paint that over the hands, paint it over the legs. And of course, this is coming in a bit too strong. So we're just going to pull it back in one second, paint it over this hand. That's good. I think the tummy area is fine. Yeah, everything else is about fine. Okay. From here, hold down alter option and you can actually just drag back. So once you have settings dialed in, you can actually just pull back on the, uh, hold left to go and reduce the effect, go to the right to increase the effect. So here, obviously, we wanna reduce the effect down. And it looks pretty natural, like right when you get about, you know, half strength from where it was, okay? And that looks really cool. So check this out. This was our original shot right there. And this is the final image. In fact, we'll put those side by side and uh, blow them up on the screen because that's kind of wild. And we've done the cooler version. We also did the warmer version. So if you look at them, the exact same techniques, different, you know, adjustments and hue and whatnot, but you can take this image that looks very average and get to a really great edit. And remember, this was all just shot in a plain garage just by controlling light with the door and using a bit of composition basics. This is how I like to do. I like to keep these tutorials very relatable just so, you know, you don't need to have, and, and we will get into the fancy stuff, you know, the big lighting and all that kind of stuff. That's cool. But I also like for everybody to realize just how much you can do with what you already have. And hopefully this did that for y'all.
you know, the whole create no matter what philosophy. That's what we do here at Adorama. If you guys enjoyed, leave your comments below the video. It helps me when you actually thumbs up the video as well. It lets Adorama and YouTube and everybody know that this is a cool video. You guys should check it out. Uh, and I do read the comments. I actually get a lot of ideas from your guys' comments, including a lot of you have been asking, like, show more of the edits, you know, on the, on the videos that we do. So that's why I'm doing this video. In the meantime, I don't need to tell you how YouTube works. If you dig what we're posting, then we want to see you back here and you know what to do. If you want to follow me, you can check me out at Pygir. So that kind of has, well, that's my personal account, it has everything, personal life, family life, all my businesses, all that kind of stuff. But love to see you guys there. And if not, I'll see you guys back here same time, same place next week. Peace.